Ladies and gentlemen of the internet, The Blue Shifting proudly presents the Otaku Awards for the Winter 2016 season! How's it going guys? Welcome to The Blue Shifting. This is the show where I go over each and every anime I watched and give it an award based on its merits or dismerits, I guess you could say. These awards will range in their, in their severity and you should get a good general idea of how I felt about the series and whether or not you should see it if you didn't get a chance to. Now naturally, I didn't get to watch every single anime. I want to increase the amount I do watch to the best of my ability, but let's be honest, I have a life. I've got to make sure I have time and I do what I can. Also, there are series that I just cannot continue and you'll see a few of those. The choice I make to not finish a series is not one to make lightly. Honestly, I only do so if it really is just so unbearable for me or it just loses my interest so much that I find I'm not even paying attention when it's on. Usually I just discard those and focus on the rest. The only shows that are going to be making it to the grand finale at the end of the year are either going to be the ones getting the awards for Best Anime of the Season or Best Waifu of the Season. Now this show isn't just going to be a session about me spouting my opinion, I'm going to be relying on your opinions as well. I need you guys to be able to leave in the description and comment sections below what your opinions were about the seasons. What did you agree with my opinions and did you disagree on any of them? And in your opinion, who was the most fabulous waifu and what was the most fabulous season of anime? Those will also be counted towards the end of the year Grand Otaku Awards, but we'll get to that later. For now, let's get started on all our honorable and dishonorable mentions. So first off in this, uh, in the Otaku Awards, the first award for the... <sighs> That was pleasant award. Goes to Konosuba. Konosuba, God's blessing on this wonderful world, is not going to be the first anime to run to if you're wanting a intelligent and you know thought-provoking type of a story. It's not really kind of built. It's not. It's not really built that way. It definitely revolves a lot around fan service, funny satire, and a lot of very interesting, although kind of flat plot lines. Now, don't get the impression at all that that means this is poor or bad. Remember, it got the award for the, ah, this is pleasant, because it's something you can just tune on, run in the background of like some other task you're doing, and find yourself chuckling at almost every joke. It's a series that you watch just for the sake of a pleasant feeling. The experience is kind of like drinking a club soda. It's not really a fancy drink, it's not really complex in its flavors and its layering, it's very basic, but that in itself makes it pleasurable and enjoyable. Konosuba is fun, full of wacky situations and air-headed characters that always make things interesting. The magic and the scenarios that are faced are more reminiscent of a light-hearted sword art online than anything else, and as a matter of fact that's kind of the plot anyway. It's more about a world that's disconnected from our world and the pitfalls and downsides that come with a world of fantasy and magic. Our next winner is Okana for Rhythm Across the Blue. This series gets the award for the Better Than Quidditch Fake Sport Award. Okana is a series that focuses on the lives of students in a club who are focusing on trying to win grand tournaments. These students are sacrificing themselves, working hard, and getting a lot done. It's a very motivational, very up uplifting type of series. However, Unlike most sports anime, this one focuses on a sport that is completely fictional. A fantastic idea of being able to wear shoes that let you fly, you know, like Hermes style, and about playing a game called Flying Circus involving racing to buoys and, uh, trying, to t and trying to tag each other out of the air. The series is really quite fascinating. It's got a lot of action, it's got a lot of drama, and it's got so much going on that you can't help but be brilliantly interested. There's just so much to do and so much interesting stuff that I couldn't honestly stop. It kind of is not really my thing. I've never moved really into sports growing up. As you can tell, I don't play them much. However, even somebody who can't appreciate, you know, normal sports like basketball, baseball, wrestling, all that kind of stuff, could probably enjoy this series because of the idea of being able to fly independently of any other aircraft. It's a fantastic and beautifully depicted series. The art form and the voice acting 
are spot on for the type of series, and there's enough intrigue there to keep me interested, even though it's mostly revolving around a sport. And now, on to our first dishonorable award. Our first dishonorable award, we're going to BBK Bronca. Bronca, I don't even know how to pronounce it. It's a weird word. And the award, go the award going to BBK is the Best Belated Villain Award. Okay, seriously guys, I was this close to dropping this series. The art style is intriguing, and that's about all this one really had going for it. The character development is flat as a pancake and about as lively. There is a delicious syrupy coating of beautiful art and set pieces that make it appealing to watch, but the rancid pancake underneath is just so disgusting, it really becomes burdensome. The character development is so disappointing. The characters are shotgunned at the viewer so quickly, you don't have a chance to really start feeling empathetic for them at all. As a matter of fact, the story has to force their stories onto you and force their personalities onto you, almost like they're begging you to care about this dozen characters that they have to introduce in a rapid succession in like 13 episodes. What's worse is the fact that this series is insulting in the sense that it leaves large gaping holes in their plot. I'm not talking about like subplots either, like how did this character end up here or why did they survive that? More of the important things like why are they doing what they're doing? What are the rules to this world? And more importantly, why does it matter? I literally spent the entire series not caring about anything that was going on until the last episode. Literally the last episode, the only thing that saved this series is that it painted the backstory of a villain that was fascinating. The villains were absolutely crazy. The leader was blatantly insane. Her followers were, at the best, horribly, horribly perverted. <laughs> like, seriously guys, like there's one guy who literally strongly implied that he like seduced and like slept with a 14 year old it's just not good and like at the very end suddenly we get this enormous backstory kind of showing the whole map of where they started who they were turned out they were the heroes it was the most amazing arc to see where they started out being a group of kids all working together trying to save the planet and how as fate took its twists and turns, they were forced to do more and more despicable things in the name of the good and the right, to the point where they were literally dominating everybody. And although their domination was horrible, you find out at the end that they were the lesser of two evils by far. And that was the only thing I liked about this series. I was cheering for the bad guys by the end. And sadly, that's not a good thing. Not for this series. Beautifully crafted villains can be like haunting and awesome, but you never want them to actually be on your team. However, if I were given the choice to join either the insane lady who was leading the team of villains, or joining like the happy-go-lucky kids who were supposed to be the heroes, I'd jump on the crazy wagon in a second. Now, that's just an opinion, but overall, I've seen a lot of people say this show is pretty disgusting in their opinion, and I have to agree. So, take your award. Best belated villains, literally the only thing going for you. Our next series to win an award is the Myriad Colors Phantom World. This one was really fun. And it receives the award of Fantastic Fan Service. Now, Fantastic Fan Service is a fun thing to say, but I'm going to get to that. I am one of the believers of plot related fan service. It sounds like a paradox, but it, that's the problem. It shouldn't be. A lot of series use fan service as a poster way to kind of get people interested. Like, oh, look at these pretty girls and they're pretty bodies. I obviously you want to spend hours watching our stuff. Sadly, that works. Sex sells. That's just the, the law of, I don't know, dudes or, or, or and ladies, you know. It's kind of an inevitable truth. But I think it often detracts from the plot. Usually it's a distraction or it takes up time that really should be focused on other things. However, Myriad Colors does not do the same thing. It definitely has fan service, don't get me wrong. It's full of it. However, the fan service is directly plot related. And let me give you an example. There's a fantastic episode where a phantom or a practically a living idea invades the world and starts turning people into cats or nyans. You know, like they're turning into the cat people with the ears and the tail. Normally not my kind of thing, but this one's just amazing. <laughs> it's such a good episode. You have these cute girls that are already fabulously attractive now turning into Nekos, which is 
something I didn't even know was a potential fetish of mine. And now I think it might be one. It's ridiculous. It's so cute and so, I don't know. There's no words. You have to see it. But the point is, is that the fan service of that episode and making these people into Nekos is not the fact that they're turned like Nekos. Like it wasn't just to make them that way. Although maybe it was. But this is, it was tied directly to a story of a phantom of a cat kind of like an echo of a cat that had once had like like friends and company that was now very lonely and wanted to have new friends so it was turning everyone into cats and that's amazing because it's a fan service but part of a direct plot and like it actually is integrated well with the story needless to say myriad colors does one of the best jobs of including fan service making it plot related plot relevant and not the focus of the entire series Fan service in Mary Colors was brilliantly done. And not only that, the plot and the storyline of it is very interesting. The idea that ideas, like characters, or stories, and events, and, and even just inanimate objects that are either well beloved or thought of often, start coming to life and have like purpose and drive of their own. Quite honestly, it's a little meta. Because honestly, we all kind of wish in some small way that we could have a piece of the anime universe become a part of our own lives. What if that literally started happening? It'd be pretty kind of crazy. And now on to our first short series to receive an award. And the award goes to Please Tell Me Galakachan, which obviously gets the award of I wish no one would know I had seen this. As awkward as it is, it's fabulously done. And the whole progress of the story is about a few girls in high school having a little shorts talking about effectively it's sex ed but entertaining. Like, I wish I could have just watched this show and never had to go to the class. They talk a little bit more about, like, the whispered rumors or the things that people say are true but might not be. You know, the things that you never really ask because you're too awkward or just don't want to bring that kind of subject up with somebody who might actually know the answer. So these rumors and these things that you sometimes will hear, they actually address a lot of those. And I find it very interesting. It's embarrassing to say that I watched the entire series, but I did. I learned a lot. I learned a lot of stuff I probably didn't need to know. But it's probably good, I know. You know. No. <laughs> oh my gosh. What have I, what have I become? What have I become? What, have I, what am I doing with myself? <laughs> no surprise here, the next award goes out to Erased, and it gets the most aggravating last 30 seconds of an episode award. I obviously don't have to point out, if you've seen this series, you know what I'm talking about. The last 30 seconds of every episode always had the most outrageous cliffhangers maddening almost at how bizarre and crazy and just cruel just genuinely cruel they would tantalize horrible horrible things happening in the next episode and it's like go straight to the credits like it was nothing and it would just blow your brains out or make you want to to those of you who haven't seen it watch this anime it is fabulous it has some oddities though for instance it somehow gives you the ability to watch it and see two 11 year olds that are flirting and uh, and make it seem natural I didn't do anything like that when I was 11. Good grief. Girls were still cooties and scary. And yet, this show makes it seem like it's perfectly normal. And then it also makes it kind of creepily weird that there's a 17-year-old who is interested in flirting with a 29-year-old. And somehow you're cheering for him. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's because it's an underdog. Maybe it's because she's just adorable. And he's awesome. And you just kind of want them to be happy. But, Jesus. Japan, really, to have to make it that awkward sometimes. Regardless, the show was amazing. Very well designed characters, well designed plot, well designed set pieces and drawing. There's really nothing in there that I really didn't enjoy. So if you haven't seen it, get yourself out there and see it. You're missing out. And finally, we have another award going out to a short series called Uyasan Wa. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna slaughter this. So buckle up, people. Uyasan Wa Sushuki. <laughs> she sh she key. I'm gonna put it down here somewhere. The award for this one is it's cute in all the wrong ways. Once again, Japan, what are you doing to us? It's another series where you have a guy who was into a little flat, and his manager is literally a middle school girl. I don't know. They don't explain how she got that position. Don't explain why. It's a short, so obviously they don't have time to explain it. They just shock and stuff it to you and accept it. And it's fine. It's cute and it's bugly. Honestly, adorable in every way, but still awkward because we have these genuine moments where 
there's like perceived flirting or even interpreted flirting that's just wrong. You do not flirt, even unintentionally, with a middle schooler when you were in college age. It's not right. I feel like I shouldn't have to say this, but it's Japan, it's anime. Don't judge it harshly because I promise it actually is worth watching, but there are definitely some cringy moments where I'm just like, oh, why? Why? This is a thing. And now for the grand conclusion, we will have the final two major awards being handed out. Now, as I said earlier, these awards will actually have very strong merit because they will become the applicants to the 2016 Best Otaku Awards coming at the end of the year. These awards will be given out and these, these anime will be remembered and these characters will be remembered until the end. And this is the part where your input is going to become very important. The Viewer's Choice Awards will also be brought to the end of the year finale where I will re-examine it, re-evaluate it, and very likely change my scoring based on the experiences I have then. Perspectives change a lot and oftentimes they change over the course of a few months or even years. So, don't hesitate or scream at me if I pick something that you wouldn't pick. You have an opportunity to make your voice heard and I'm going to be reading every comment. Just put it down there and I'll get to it. But for now, let's get into my worst family. Now for the best anime of the winter season, we had a lot of strong contenders. I mean, there really is a cream of the crop and then there's kind of a drab, kind of meh in the middle and then there's like some flotsam at the bottom that we're not even going to touch. Our platform this year is made up of three titles that I thought were very, very exciting and worth every second of watching. Erased, Konosuba, and Ak Akana. Now, all three of these series have merit, but they're all very different series too, so it's hard to just compare them because it's like comparing apples to oranges. It really depends on the flavor text of what you're going for. Now, Erased obviously comes up with a very dramatic and mysterious and like kind of pulse-pounding excitement. Uh, Well-developed characters, fantastic art styles, it's a really strong contender. Konosuba, on the other hand, is not so much on the high end of like the development and art style, but Konosuba definitely has a lot of good stuff going for it. I mean, it was very pleasant to watch. There was no gritting of teeth like in a race, and there was no real cringiness to it at all. It was just a big barrel of fun and that's hard to fight against because a genuine just happy feeling is often the best thing you can have in an experience like watching an anime. And then finally Okana. Okana, like I said, is the sports anime and I normally don't go for sports anime but the fact that this one captured me and made me very interested and kept me engaged until the very last second shows that it's one of quality. It's one of the few worlds that we can genuinely say I want to live there because it wasn't fighting demonic monsters, it wasn't fighting some strange spirits or ghosts or super saiyans. It was about flying in the air, having fun while doing so, and doing some pretty awesome acrobatics. Like, it was genuinely just a fun trip the whole way through. Constantly surprising me, constantly putting me on the edge of my seat, and is quite worthy of being considered for the top final three. Now, I had to deliberate a lot about this decision. It's not something you can make easily, because all the series lacked in areas that other, the other series often were great at. However, when it comes to an overall feeling, an overall experience that was memorable and impactful and made me think and made me consider things I've never thought of before, which I genuinely think is the most important aspect of art, I have to give the award to Erased. Now, oh, Erased was fabulous. I know not everyone agrees it was the best, but it's hard to deny that this series isn't impactful. I don't think there's a single person who hasn't watched it who doesn't feel drawn to the characters, and that is a, and that magnetism is the genuineness and the effort and the power of a series. Konosobo and Okana don't have that magnetism. They were brilliantly executed, wonderfully done, and very fun. I hope they get sequels. But Erased really had a way to speak to the heart and soul. Konosaba and Okana are series built around enjoyment and pleasure. They're really about a fun, vibrant atmosphere. Erased is about sending a message and ideas into your head. It's something that makes you really apply what's going on into your own life. And the impact of something like that is really hard to forget. It's really hard to not be engrossed. And so naturally, that's why this is, uh, Erased is going to win the award for me. Erased is the winner, it will be advancing to possibly be one of the best anime of the year. 
Now, if you disagree, please leave a comment. I've got to hear it. I want to hear your votes because there is a runner-up that's going to be picked by you. And finally, probably the best award of the year, the Waifu Award. Now, the Waifu Award obviously is a little bit sexist, but I'm a guy and I'm attracted to girls, and so naturally, I'm looking for the Waifus. At the end of the year, I will have a Husbando round based on what I hear in the comment section below. I'm also going to be basing that result on the comments and the votes I hear from there because I don't know if I can contribute genuinely to that poll. I mean, it's just not written in the stars for me. However, I don't want to leave the girls out, so please, if you are an anime fan and you have a Husbando, whether you're a guy or a girl, please leave it in the comments below, leave the reasoning why, and try and get any of your other friends to put it in there too, and that way they can also receive an award at the end of the year. The Waifu Award is something that is going to be hard because there's a lot of people with a lot of different opinions. And it's going to be difficult because I already know for a fact that a lot of my favorite um, YouTube anime watchers and friends that are anime watchers already have very different opinions about the waifus of this season. Now please forgive me, I'm going to mispronounce these names. I'll do my absolute best, but I'm an American, I'm not Japanese, I'm not going to claim that I have the ability to do to pronounce these words perfectly. I try, and that's about all I can do for you. Now our first waifu award goes to Ari Katagiri from Erased. Now Ari Katagiri is a fabulous character. I thought she was a little odd, she was flirting with someone a lot older than her. She was kind, that was cool, but like, she didn't really have an impact besides just kind of being kind of cute. Then she becomes this strong, independent female character, which I love seeing in series. We well, don't have enough of strong, independent, and free-thinking female characters. Sadly, she still is kind of just caught up in like the, the potential romance. However, you can tell that her actions aren't motivated by romance, they're motivated by her personal thought and personal convictions, which is extremely exciting to see in a series. Not only is she just a fabulous character who's willing to do what it takes to get done what she feels is necessary, she also literally gets down and gritty and socks a guy right in the face for being a jerk and being a two-timer. It was absolutely one of my favorite moments of the entire series, and I knew that instant that she was a waifu. I knew that she was somebody who would be absolutely fabulous to get to know, become a friend with, possibly even date. That if she's that kind of person, it would just be really fun. And so she obviously gets a strong contending for this round. Second, we have the fabulous, beautiful, and absolutely destructive Megunami from Konosaba. Now, she was absolutely cute. She gotta have my heart from the beginning. She's just adorable, fantastic, and loves blowing up stuff. I mean, what's not to love? She's an impact to the story, she has her own kind of drive and her own kind of ambitions. In Konosaba, all the characters are a little flat, so she's not the most well-developed character, but you do get to see some fun, cute, shy parts of her. She also has that Moe-type uh, feeling where she's the kind of character who you feel like needs a little bit of protecting. Not because she's not awesome, she's incredibly awesome, she's like the strongest character in the show, but every time she exerts her power, it makes her fall unconscious, and she literally has to be carried out in a piggyback. And so, like, she's got that, protect that, oh, I want to protect you type feel, which makes it just all the more fun, and makes her a fantastic waifu for this season. And last, but certainly not least, for this season's roundup of incredible waifus is Ridaza Izumi from Myriad Colors. Now this might sound as a surprise, because Myriad Colors didn't make my top three, unlike the other two, but that's okay. Awesome waifus often don't come from the best animes. You can probably pick out a few waifus of your own and ask yourself, were the animes really that good, or was that character just incredibly appealing? And that's the case with this one. Myriad Colors was fantastic, I did enjoy it. However, Rina as a character made that entire series for me. Now she has that air of shy and quietness to her that makes her really intriguing and really just adorable, but she's also very independent and very capable on her own. She can do things and when she's confronted with an awkward situation or potential perv, she defends herself with the utmost strength and literally lays them flat on their back. She's not somebody you can approach or take advantage of, she's somebody who could give you the warmest heart ever and also be one of the most adorable people while at it. Now this one, honestly, I didn't have to think too much about, but the winner of the Winter Season Waifu Award must go to Rita Izumi. Rita is just fabulous in every way. There's nothing that can really top her. I mean, the other contenders were gorgeous and cute and just fun, but there's nobody who I'd rather spend time with than Rina. I mean, honestly, how could you not? And plus, 
Rena awoke my inner unknown potential fetishes. <laughs> like, she had so many interesting things happening to her in the episodes that were just a little too quiet. Whether it be making a sexy pose to try and convince a pervy monkey to come out of the water. Or getting cat ears and a tail when she started turning into a cat. Or even more in the scene when she was turned into a bunny person as she was adopted by some phantoms. Oh, geez, that one still gets me. I mean, honestly, she is fabulous. And somebody who <laughs> literally would catch my attention from hundreds of miles away. It's one of the few characters I wish were real. And one of the characters I wish I could have known in high school. Would have been so much fun. Now, of course, waifus are waifus. They're not real. And as much as we wish they were real, honestly, you're not going to find a whole lot of people who can do the things that they can do. But there's nothing wrong with having a nice little waifu to call your own. And this year's waifu has to be Rina Izumi because she is just darn gorgeous. Oh, man. Thank you all so much for attending the winter wrap-up of the Otaku Awards for this season. I'm watching more series this season than I watched last season, so we're going to have a much broader take on what's available. Now remember, it's critically important that you take the time to leave a comment talking about your favorite anime and your favorite waifu or husbando of the winter anime season. Remember, it has to be from the winter 2016 season or it doesn't count. I will be looking in the comments and doing a tally both shortly after this video is posted and at the end of the year when I'm preparing for the brand Otaku Awards that will be coming probably around New Year's itself. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. I know my anime uh, reviews and my anime rants have been much slowed down recently. The production has been very difficult to pull off, but we've made some changes and I'm going to be back on track. It's starting with this great Otaku season. It's been fabulous. Thank you so much for being with me. And to catch more anime reviews and to play more visual novels that are anime based, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and let me know in the comments below what you like. And until the next video, I'll see ya. Thank you so much.